it is now time to formally welcome you to Poetry on Demand. This is part of our Big Read series, and we are so excited to bring it to you. My name is Tanisha. I'm with Hillsborough County Public Library. I'm joined with Amanda and Chris, who are also part of Hillsborough County Public Library. How are y'all doing tonight? Very good. Great. Ready to read some poetry. Yes. All right, Amanda, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera and hand things over to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, as Tanisha was saying, uh, as we go to the next slide, this evening's program is part of our continuing celebration of the NEA Big Read. So if you're just joining us, the NEA Big Read is organized in which a community is funded by the uh, National Endowment for the Arts and it is a grant to help support a community to select one title and read together and really start a community discussion around this book. This year we've selected the book of poetry by An American Sunrise by the poet jo Joy Harjo. We're actually going to be starting a little later with a selection from this book, but if you haven't had a chance yet, there's still tons of ways to get involved with this program, especially with our culminating event on Friday, December 3rd at 6.30 p.m. We will be having a live virtual interaction, uh, interactive program with the poet and author herself, Joy Harjo. This is not to be missed. If you've not registered yet, you can go to hcplc.org slash NEA Big Read to find out how to register. It is free and open to the public and how to source a copy of the book so you can read it in advance. Uh, when it, once again, there's a lot of great poetry events going on. There's still time to get involved in ones that are coming up. And you can find our pre-recorded YouTube channel of the ones that have already happened. So we look forward to sharing another poetry event with you very soon down the road. Okay, let's go ahead. And actually, Chris and Tanisha, if you want to come back before we get into tonight's program, we were so lucky. We got a lot of great suggestions from our readers and from our customers at home. So a lot of those we are going to be reading tonight. Uh, but who are some of your favorite poets or maybe poetry style or... What do you enjoy when you look for poetry? So Amanda, something, I'll be honest, I am not that big <laughs> into poetry. Um, it's something that's a little bit newer to me, but something that I've been noticing a lot is um, the idea of novel and verse. So there is a book that I just read called Girl, Woman, Other, where the author wrote it in a way that was more like a poem. It was a whole novel, but it was more like a poem instead of like a traditional novel. So she didn't use a lot of punctuation. I don't think she used punctuation at all. Um, it was very much like a set of interweaving poems that told this really beautiful story. So even though I don't sit down and expressively read like a poetry book, I've noticed that poetry has snuck into other genres. I think you're right, Tanisha. I think we're seeing that a lot in um, YA literature. I know, I think Elizabeth Acevedo has a really good novel in verse. And I know uh, Margarita Langle has also written in the past. So that's something if you are looking to, I think that's a good also gateway into poetry. If you're kind of more familiar or comfortable with the novel construct, it might be a good way to get in. Kind of speaking of that, piggybacking off what you've said, uh, I have found in my life, um, I don't read as many direct just collections of poetry, but I really find I enjoy poetry when it is enhancing or paired with another art form. So we just read uh, Isabel Allende, Soul of a Woman or Mujeres de Alma Mia. And she had a really good poem by a young um, Romanian Spanish poet named Miguel Gane. In Spanish, it's Arde, or in English, it was called Burn. I really enjoy that. Or even one of my earliest memories is uh, of, of a poem kind of enhancing literature is if you guys remember the, the novel, The Outsiders, and uh, Robert Frost, who we will be reading this evening, his poem, Nothing Gold Can Stay. And that poem has stuck with me so long, but I think it's because it's, it's the mix of the art form and that sort of thing. So um, Chris, what about you? What are you, what's your poetry style? I'm kind of like Tunisia where I don't, you know, seek it out or I'm not like a huge fan of it, but I do enjoy it. It's, it's like when I encounter a poem that strikes me or, you know, it's, it, it right. causes an emotion or moves me. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sold and I, and I love it. Um, there are a few that I, I find the more I read them. I, I know I, I later in life, I discovered uh, Rainer Maria Rilke. Um, his poems are really powerful and kind of not, I want to say heavy, but they're very, you know, powerful and almost like mystical. There's a poem by him called Let Everything Happen to You that I recommend if anybody wants to 
maybe get an introduction to his poetry, that one. Uh, but there's also some standard ones that I, I enjoyed as a kid or was introduced as a child to, like Edgar Allan Poe and uh, Mary Oliver and E.E. E. Cummings, um, and even Sylvia Plath. I find that their poems are worth worth reading. There's, you know, it's not just, you know, in art, there's also messages in there that are, that are important. If you are looking for the flip side, because poetry can be a little bit heavy, a little bit deep, if you're looking for something a little more on the satirical side, I would definitely recommend Dorothy Parker. Very clever, very witty, very cutting at times, but uh, very um, quip heavy. But uh, so yeah, well, we are, well, there's a lot of poetry we enjoy. We definitely want to hear from the audience if there's any styles, movements, authors, poets that you would like us to shout out here in the discussion section. But for now, let's go ahead and get into the reading of our first poem. Okay, and I believe I will be kicking things off with a poem from An American Sunrise. You can actually find, I love hearing books read by the author. We have this book in many, many formats in our catalog, whether it's the physical copy, the digital copy, or the digital audiobook all available. You can actually hear this read by the author if you uh, go to hcplt.org slash ebooks and you check out the digital audiobook. Uh, Joy Harjo is the third, this is her third term as a National Poet Laureate, which is pretty much unprecedented. There's only one other poet who's been chosen for three terms. She's also the first Native American to have been named the National Poet Laureate, and you'll see that reflected the importance of Native American Indigenous culture how she interweaves both our national history and her personal history in her poems. So let's start off with her poem, Seven Generations, which you can find in An American Sunrise. Children play with full bellies at the edge of the mating dance, beneath a sky thrown open to the need of stars to know themselves against the dark. All night we dance, the weave of joy and tears. All night we're lit with the sunrise of forever, just ahead of us through the trees, one generation after another. So that is just a little taste of the poetry from an American Sunrise, but we are gonna go ahead, I'm going to turn off my camera and we are going to go to our next poem, which I believe is a recorded poem. You are right, Amanda, it is a recorded poem um, read by one of our staff members, Eric. He is reading The Waking, by Theodore Rothkey. So we are going to go ahead and play that now. Hello, my name is Eric Hughes and I am the adult literacy librarian for the Tampa Hillsborough County Public Library and the Hillsborough Literacy Council. Today I would like to share with you a poem that's been a favorite of mine since back in my college days. It was written by a man named Theodore Retke, who was from Michigan and was active during the mid-century period of the 50s and 60s. And he was a big burly guy, but he wrote a lot of sweet poetry, uh, a lot about nature and some of the softer sides of life. So I hope that you enjoyed this piece, which is considered to be one of his signature pieces. It's called The Waking. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I feel my fate and what I cannot fear. I learn by going where I have to go. We think by feeling, what is there to know? I hear my being dance from ear to ear. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. Of those of those so close beside me, which are you? God bless the ground. I shall walk softly there and learn by going where I have to go. Light takes the tree, but who can tell us how? The lowly worm climbs up a winding stair. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. Great nature has another thing to do to you and me. So take the lively air and lovely learn by going where to go. This shaking keeps me steady. I should know. What falls away is always and is near. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. 
I learn by going where I have to go. Okay, we thank Eric for sharing that first poem. And we're actually going to go to our first. Eric had mentioned he is our programming librarian for the Hillsborough Literacy Council. And if you were not aware, we would like to share a great community poetry resource and our first resource shout out, which is the Visions Poetry Booklet. Every year, the Hillsborough Literacy Council puts together a book of poems called Visions. Now, you can find this at hillsboroughliteracy.org. You can actually find not only this year's 2021 Visions Poetry Book, but years past downloaded there. You can find the poems. This year, the theme was, uh, it was the theme of where I come from and who I am. So there's a lot of great, beautiful poems. And what I love about sharing this resource with people is it truly is a community poetry project. These poems are submitted by our tutors and our students through the Hillsborough Literacy Council. They are just beautiful, funny, just moving poems in this community poetry volume. So I would recommend checking that out. And if you do want more information about getting involved, whether as a student, or a tutor or just finding out what more the Literacy Council does. They do focus on adult literacy and English language learning. You can check that out also at hillsboroughliteracy.org. Okay, Tanisha, let's go into our next poem. Okay, Amanda, thank you so much. So our next poem that we have was recommended by library patron Suzanne. And she would like us to read, Still Do I Keep My Look, My Identity by Gwendolyn Brooks. So we do have some of her books in our catalog. So we had one called Bronzeville. It's really, it's a nice um, picture book for kids. And we also have the essential Gwendolyn, book, um, Gwendolyn Brooks. So those are two books that we definitely recommend that you check out. And a couple of things about Miss Brooks. Um, she wrote the poem that we are going to be reading in 1944. It can be found in the poetry magazine of verse. Something else of note is that she is the first African American to win a Pulitzer Prize. She won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry in 1950. So now that you have a little bit of background about Gwendolyn Brooks, I will read, Still Do I Keep My Look, My Identity. Each body has its art, its precious prescribed pose, that even in passion stroll contortions, waltzes, or push of pain, or when a grief has stabbed, or hatred hacked, is its and nothing else. Each body has its pose. No other stock that is irrevocable, perpetual, and it's to keep. In castle or in shack, with rags or robes, through good, nothing, or ill, and even in death a body like no other on any hill or plain or crawling cot, or gentle for the lilyless hasty pall, having twisted, gagged, and then sweet ceased to bother, shows the personal art, the look, shows what it showed at baseball, what it showed in school. So it was a really lovely poem by Miss Gwendolyn Brooks. And going off of that, we are going to have another quick resource shout out for you. This is our Activities to Go series. So this is something the library has been putting together for the past couple of years. It's just a set of activities for you to do with your family. It has crosswords, word searches, coloring pages, crafts, science experiments, um, food um, food recipes, all different types of activities for you to do with your family. This month's activity to go is all things um, fall based on the harvest. And of course, since we are doing the big read this month, poetry. So there's also a really fun poetry craft or you can make a poem color book that's in there. So we highly recommend that you check that out. And so now I believe we are going into our next video we are going to have a reading of Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. That is a mouthful. And that is by one of our other library staff members. So we are going to go ahead and play that now.
Hi, my name is Matthew. Hi, my name is Zoe. And I am with the Public Library. And I am with the McKittrick Bobcats. Go Bobcats. Uh, and today we're going to be reading Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout Would Not Take the Garbage Out by... Shel Silverstein. And you wanted to say something about the author, Zoe. Shel Silverstein is a poem writer that everybody on the world adores reading. That's right. He's very, very popular, but it was not always so. He had a very difficult time getting published in the early days, but... He persevered and stuck with it, and now we get to read his wonderful works. And a lot of the uh, activities that go along with his works can be found on this website. And you can learn more about the author at shellsilverstein.com. Which is a real website. It's a real website. And then uh, many of his books, actually most of his books, can be found on the library's website for free checkout in various formats, both electronic and print. And that is hcplc.org slash books. Ready to read? Let's do it. Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout would not take the garbage out. She'd scour the pots and scrape the pans, candy the yams, and spice the hams. And though her daddy would scream and shout, she simply would not take the garbage out. So, and it, so it piled up to the ceilings, coffee grounds, potato peelings. Brown bananas, rotten peas, chunks of sour cottage cheese. It filled the can, it covered the floor, it cracked the window and blocked the door. With bacon rinds and chicken bones, trippy ends of ice cream cones, prune pits, peach pits, orange peels, gloppy glumps of cold oatmeal. Pizza crusts and withered greens, soggy beans and tangerines, crusts of black burned buttered toast, grisly bits of beefy roasts. The garbage rolled on down the hall. It raised the roof. It broke the wall. Greasy napkins, cookie crumbs, globs of gooey bubble gum. Cellophane from green baloney, rubbery blubbery macaroni. <laughs> Peanut butter caked and dry, curdled milk and crusts of pie. Moldy melons, dried up mustard, eggshells mixed with lemon custard. Cold French fries and rancid meat, yellow lumps and cream of wheat. At last the garbage reached so high that it finally touched the sky. And all the neighbors moved away and none of her friends would come to play. And finally, Sarah Cynthia Stout said, okay, I'll take the garbage out. <laughs> but then, of course, it was too late. The garbage reached across the state. From New York to the Golden Gate. And there in the garbage she did hate. Poor Sarah met an awful fate that I cannot right now relate. Because the hour is too late, but children remember Sarah Stout and always, always take the garbage out. That's right. The end. end. All right. That was a wonderful reading about a very fun and funny poem. I'm going to come back on camera here because it's my turn to read a poem. And this poem was suggested by a library customer named Elizabeth. Thank you for your suggestion. Um, this poem is called Aimless Love by Billy Collins, who is an American poet. He is still alive. He turned 80 years old just this past year, born in 1941. And uh, Billy Collins was uh, appointed as the Poet Laureate of the United States um, from 2001 to 2003. And as of uh, 2020, uh, I did a little research, not a lot, but he was teaching in the Master of Fine Arts program at Stony Brook, Southampton. Um, Aimless Love was published in February of 2002. And I've got it right here. So let's read it. Aimless Love by Billy Collins. This morning, as I walked along the lake shore, I fell in love with a wren and later in the day with the mouse the cat had dropped under the dining room table. In the shadows of an autumn evening, I fell for a seamstress still at her machine in the tailor's window. 
and later for a bowl of broth, steam rising like smoke from a naval battle. This is the best kind of love, I thought, without recompense, without gifts or unkind words, without suspicion or silence on the telephone. The love of the chestnut, the jazz cap, and one hand on the wheel. No lust, no slam of the door, the love of the miniature orange tree, the clean white shirt, the hot evening shower, the highway that cuts across Florida. No waiting, no huffiness or rancor, just a twinge every now and then for the wren who had built her nest on a low branch overhanging the water and for the dead mouse still dressed in its light brown suit. But my heart is always standing on its tripod, ready for the next arrow. After I carried the mouse by the tail to a pile of leaves in the woods, I found myself standing at the bathroom sink, gazing down affectionately at the soap. And that's the poem. Thank you, Chris. That was a good one. I believe we are in good company because I believe uh, Billy Collins was a also a former uh, National Poet Laureate, just like our keynote speaker for Friday, December 3rd, Susan Harjo is the current one. I will now be reading, we had mentioned Robert Frost earlier, I will be reading his famous poem, The Road Not Taken. You can actually find this, uh, this anthology on our digital collection, Overdrive or the Libby app at hcplc.org slash ebooks. And in preparation to read this poem, I did find an interesting fact about this. Robert Frost is kind of one of those very rare poets that it was both critically acclaimed and appreciated in his own time by the public. Uh, often people think or scholars think that's because he had a way of taking, you know, themes of nature and philosophy and breaking it down into ways that it very, very easy to understand by every the every person out there. So I think that's why his poetry has some lasting power. But an interesting fact about this poem is uh, he claimed to have written this poem, uh, The Road Not Taken in Jest, for his friend and fellow poet, Edward Thomas. It was actually published in 1915. And he said they would often literally go out walking. They would take a daily constitutional. And his friend, Edward Thomas, would regret or rue not taking the, the route they had not taken. So he said he wrote this poem in jest, but he, uh, and then later read it to, it was it was taken very seriously, but he did also claim or quip often, I'm never more serious than when joking. So perhaps he was joking about that. Okay, let's go ahead and read The Road Not Taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it's grassy and wanted wear, though as far as that passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Okay, Chris, I believe you're gonna come back and tell us about our last resource shout out. Great reading. Yes, I am here to talk about our NEA Big Read uh, publication that we partnered with Tampa Bay Times on. Um, this is part of their neighbor, uh, newspapers and education initiative. And they put out this wonderful multi-page color publication. Um, and it's all about this year's NEA Big Read, of course, the chosen book in American Sunrise by Joe Harjo. Um, this can be downloaded, if you can't find a physical paper copy, this can be downloaded right from um, the landing page, hcplc.org slash NEA Big Read. You can get the full color PDF there and read it on your device or your laptop. And it contains a lot of great information for teens and adults and maybe some older children who might find it interesting, but there's information on Joy Harjo, um, An American Sunrise, 
um, and, and a lot more in there. So we invite you to check that out. Okay, we are going to end the reading portion of our evening with a book, uh, a poetry book for children by the great Maya Angelou. This version is actually illustrated by Jean-Michel Michel Basquiat, the famous, uh, the famous artist, and uh, the illustrations come from him. This is a book geared towards children called Life Doesn't Frighten Me. Again, it is by the great poet Maya Angelou. Shadows on the wall, noises down the hall. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Bad dogs barking loud. Big ghosts in a cloud. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Mean old mother goose, lions on the loose. They don't frighten me at all. Dragons breathing flame on my, on my counterpane. That doesn't frighten me at all. I go boo, make them shoo. I make fun, way they run. I won't cry, so they fly. I just smile, and they go wild. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Tough guys in a fight, all alone at night. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Panthers in the park, strangers in the dark, no, they don't frighten me at all. That new classroom where boys all pull my hair, kissy little girls with their hairs in curls, they don't frighten me at all. Don't show me the frogs and snakes and listen for my scream. If I'm afraid at all, it's only in my dreams. I've got a magic charm that I keep up my sleeve. I can walk the ocean floor and never have to breathe. Life doesn't frighten me at all. Not at all, not at all. Life doesn't frighten me at all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my camera back on and welcome everybody back on for our, um, I don't know if we should call it a Q&A this time around, but maybe comments, because I did notice some comments came through our audience. So I'm gonna go ahead and read those out. So we had somebody sneak in with the last minute suggestion. So unfortunately we weren't able to add it to our, um, program today, but we definitely appreciate it. We thank you for attending. We hope that you enjoyed the program. We hope to see you at other programs. So thank you for that suggestion. And um, this person also mentioned that they liked poems written in dialects and other language to get a flavor of a place. I think that that's definitely, um, definitely a great way to do that. Um, she's thinking Robert Burns and Scotland. Oh, I think you're muted, Amanda. It looks like it was. I was just saying that's a very nice suggestion. That is, um, it's something also that makes it more fun to read out loud. So, I, you know, they always say poetry is meant to be heard. So uh, based on the rhyme and the meter and, and everything like that, so that would definitely make it more fun. I can recommend uh, my favorite Spanish language poet is Federico Garcia Lorca, who was, of course, from the south of Spain and wrote in that as great poetry often comes from, unfortunately, civil unrest, the pre-Civil War era from Spain, so. Yeah, and there's a lot of, um, I know again, and I'm talking more of like novels and stuff, but um, I've read a, bun a ton of novels in um, Caribbean dialects and like Patois and stuff, like Jamaican Patois and other ones. And so it definitely does give you more of an, you know, enrichment of the the place and the people and the time and all of that so i definitely agree with that assessment yeah i would like to thank everyone who did give us suggestions we didn't have a chance to read everybody's but we did get another uh kind of a shout out for the poet wh auden whose books you can find uh you can find material in our physical book collection if you are interested in that poet as well so also thank you for that suggestion okay 
right. Do we have any other uh, shout outs or favorites or uh, spotlights for this evening, Tanisha? I think we are good. We definitely thank you for your comments. We definitely appreciate it. We love these programs to be interactive. So thank you for contributing to our conversation. And Amanda and Chris, I think I'm gonna go ahead and close us out as we like to do with our programs. We always like to give you our contact information. If you'd like to reach out to the library for any reason, there's our contact um, information there. We got our phone number. Also, you can reach us by phone, email, text, chat, however you want to. You can walk into the library, however you want to get a hold of us. We are available for you. And with that, we are going to go ahead and close things out. Should we close out with some snaps? Just read all that poetry. I feel like we should should do I some snaps. So. I think it's yeah, <laughs> it's apropos. <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, and we will see you next time. Bye now. Bye. Good night.